Today, I'm going to give you an honest and fair review of Luminar AI. I've been using Luminar AI now for, well, since its release date, almost a year ago. Skylum, Luminar's creators, have actually continued to update Luminar AI and improve the experience for people using this photo editing software. That's why it's important that I share this review with you. In this video, I'm gonna answer the questions, is Luminar AI actually any good? And who should be using it? and who shouldn't. Before we start, please hit subscribe if you like photography, filmmaking, and editing videos. It'd be great to welcome you to the community here at Ben's Guide. First, let's start off by talking about what's good and what's not good about Luminar AI. So the very best way that I can do this is to actually quickly take you through a photo that I will edit inside Luminar AI. And then you can see for yourself firsthand exactly what goes on. So I've got this photo here, which I'm going to edit for you guys. And then you can actually really get to grips with what you think Luminar AI is like. Then we'll discuss who Luminar is actually for and who it's not for. And of course, more importantly, the pros and the cons. Up the top here, you've got four different areas, catalog, templates, edit and export. Catalog is very similar to the catalog in Lightroom where you can catalog your photos into single images or into folders just so you can organize everything easily. Templates is where you can add a template to your image quickly and change the look of it. So I could use one of these templates here and click it and then it's going to be applied to my photo just like that. Now, of course, you have sliders down here as well, if you like quick changes like this, where you can push up and down and you can change the look of the image. Now, I don't actually use templates often. I like to go to the Edit tab. So I'm gonna click here, Reset Adjustments, and we're gonna spend some time in the Edit tab so you guys can see some of the tools inside Luminar AI and make up your own mind. When you come into the edit tab, you have under tools on the right hand side, essentials. You can think of essentials very similar to what you would see in Lightroom. The kind of tools that you would have and the features that you would have available, like composition, changing the composition of your image to adjust the size of it and the rotation, things like that. You've got light as well, which is very similar to what you would experience in Lightroom with your exposure, temperature, contrast, highlight, shadows, and things like that. You've got curves down here, which is a very powerful tool that I used to use in Lightroom a lot. So you can think of this essentials area as the place to make adjustments to your photos without the AI editing side of things. So if you really enjoy that and you've currently got Lightroom, then it's worth you knowing that you're not going to be missing that inside Luminar AI. You actually have it here too. Now, because of that, I actually want to focus most of our attention on, you know, actually reviewing the tools which stand out inside Luminar AI as being different to other photo editors. Let's come down and have a look at the creative tab where we will find the AI editing tools. Now, first up, I'm gonna show you Sky AI. This is one of the tools which I use nearly all the time and it's really good for sky replacement. This is also something that you can find inside um, Photoshop. I don't think it's inside Lightroom, but I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments below if I am on that one, but it's definitely inside Photoshop. Now, the brilliant thing about Sky AI is the amount of options that you have to change and really make the selection your own. First up though, at the top, we've got this here, which says for this photo. So Luminar AI looks at the photo and it decides what kind of skies will work best for this particular photo, which is really cool. Now you've got two here, which are free, and you've got this one, which you can buy from Luminar's media library if you wanna do that. If you decide, hey, these are not the skies for me, you can jump into sky selection, click down, and you've got a whole bunch of skies that you can choose from, and you can replace that there. Now, I'm actually gonna choose one of these and see if their recommendation 
is actually any good. So let's click on this one and see what it does. So it's took about three seconds to replace the sky and actually in my opinion I think they've done a bloody good job so you can actually see that the sky replacement is very good for this photo here and it looks very natural and uh, I'm actually really happy with that replacement so I'm gonna stick with it but let's have a look at some of the options inside the sky replacement tool if you look at sky orientation which is next on the line let's just collapse some of these and then we can see each one in order Sky orientation is the next option. This means that you can change the orientation or the position of your sky. Click on horizon position and you get this really simple to use bars which show up and you can adjust the height or the rotation of your sky. I can just bring that up to bring up my sky or I can drag the whole thing down like so or I can bring it down from the bottom and actually drag the selection below the original photo and then I could show that part instead. So you just really can adjust how the sky looks inside your original image, just giving you extra ways to kind of make it your desired effect. You can also change the rotation like this nice and simply as well. So that's a really cool section of the sky ai tool and it's something that you can quickly use to make changes to the selection now if i go off this and then go into mask refinement sometimes when you've got really detailed areas which you've got gaps through trees or buildings you might want to refine the mask now one thing i will say about this tool is it's amazing at doing really detailed selection but if you want to make any adjustments you can just refine your global mask here or you can close gaps on your horizon line or alternatively you can fix details where it might be showing now fortunately for us we don't actually have to do that here because it's already a perfect selection but you have the options if you need them scenery lighting is probably my favorite part of this tool because as you can see, I can change the light in the scene to match the new sky. The reason that's so important is because if you don't do this, you're going to have some quite unreal looking photos. And actually, that's going to stand out to anyone which is checking out your images on social media, on your website or on your portfolio. So I like to relight the scene so it matches with my sky, which actually it already pretty much matches with the sky, so it did a great uh, job at the start. And then you can change the relight saturation, so you can change the color and the saturation, so it matches more so. And finally, if you've got some humans, people in the image, then you can relight them as well. And that means that your whole scene is gonna be lit correctly with the replacement that you've made. Next up is reflection, super cool feature. This is where an update was made to Luminar AI after using this for about six months. They give us a couple of updates and about the second or third one added in this reflection tool. And that's brilliant because now you have the sky replacement actually matches in any water. So you can bring this down or you can bring it up like that just with a slider nice and simply. And you can see that the reflection is matched in the water. And then to take it to the next level, you can add in a bit of blur as well. So it looks like you've created a nice long exposure with your camera, super stuff. Next up finally is sky adjustments. If you wanna blur your sky, you can defocus it a little bit so it blends in with the background or you can add grain. You can even add atmospheric haze like you would experience on very sunny days. Let's just drag that up so you can see it. This is a really cool little feature as well and you can just make photos look more accurate if you need to with that feature. You can make it warmer giving it that golden hour look and you can increase the brightness. There really is a lot of different selections available to you just in this one tool itself and it is something I absolutely love. So I don't want to make this video too long and I think it's important that I quickly go through some of these now for the rest of them to actually show you what they do to your image and the kind of adjustments that you can make very quickly. Augmented Sky is another brilliant 
uh, feature inside Luminar AI, you can grab an object, all sky objects here. You can grab birds, balloons, clouds, giraffes, not that you want to put those in the sky, mountains for your background, rainbows, and you can get loads more from the store as well. If this is your kind of thing and you like compositing, then this is an awesome tool. Let's just show you how it works. I'm going to click on the birds here, add the birds into my sky, as you will see in a minute. I now have birds in the sky. But if I looked at that and thought, maybe it doesn't look that real, you now have adjustments that you can make. You can place the object in a certain position in your frame. You can change the size of it. So if you want the birds to be more in the distance like that, you can relight the birds so they match with your original sky replacement. And you've got advanced settings as well where you can make a better mass refinement and you can even defocus the birds so that they look like they're really in the distance and out of focus. This is a tool which you may not use every time, but Augmented Sky is certainly an awesome feature to have at your disposal if you want to use it. Now, if you wanted to add atmosphere to your photo, just another thing that it provides you with, you can add things in like fog, layered fog, mist, haze. Let's grab some layered fog and see if we can produce a misty, hazy look on this water here. So I can just drag up the amount that's going to give me more fog. And then by increasing the depth here, I can actually give distance to the fog as well. So if I bring this up, you can see that it's stretching now across the expanse of the water. And it looks like a misty morning with some birds flying over this beautiful blue sky. Atmosphere is a really cool tool and just another thing that Luminar AI offers in its editing tools. I would love to go through every single one of these tools to show you how they perform, but it's important that I make this video short. But one thing I do want to show you and something you may use a lot is sun rays. You can place a sun center in your photo just by clicking on it and then you can actually create a sun which shines in your photo. Now, once again, you may not use it, but this is something I've found I've used a lot, especially when I've been at a place where I've been shooting for a couple of days. I've been taking some landscape photos and the all out conditions have been pretty poor. So I've been able to then bring this into Luminar AI and then edit it using features like this to make it look better. You've got loads of different tools and features inside this sun rays section here. You can change the size of the sun, how many rays that it produces. You can change the glow so you can actually make it glow more. You can change the color of it. You can pretty much do anything you can think of in this section to actually bring the sun into your photo. In my opinion, it doesn't work in this photo. So I'm actually going to just switch it off here by disabling the tool. There really is so many tools inside this AI section or the creative tab inside Luminar AI. You've got even more here where you can choose the mood, which is loads of different lots that you can choose from. You can change the toning effect, which is color toning your image. You can make it matte. You can give it a mystical look. Then you have a portrait section, which I'd love to show you, but I've actually created a video all about portrait and portrait bokeh and how it works inside Luminar AI. If you're a portrait photographer or that's your interest, then there is a link showing now at the top of the video. So please click on that if that's your bag and you would like to know more about that. I've showed you how you can quickly edit a photo inside Luminar AI. Now it's important to know who Luminar AI is actually for and who really shouldn't get Luminar AI. But first, let's talk about the cons. You've been able to see how good this software works, how impressive it is, and how you kind of be mad if you weren't interested in it. But there is a couple of cons worth mentioning. Inside Luminar AI, you don't get layers. So if you're used to using Photoshop and you like layer support, you don't get access to that. It's very similar really, or an alternative to Lightroom. So if you're thinking about an editing software, then you can think about Luminar as very similar to Lightroom, but with more AI editing tools. The other side of this, which is a little bit of a con for some people, 
especially people that are a little bit more impatient, let's say, is there is a longer loading time inside Luminar AI. But hopefully watching this video, you can see that the loading is not too long. In fact, the only time loading really becomes a bit of an issue and you can be waiting, say, five to probably 10 seconds in the very worst case scenario is when you've made lots and lots of changes to your photo and then the program is trying to edit through the changes that you've already made. So they are two cons which is worth knowing about if you're interested in this software. So I just thought I'd put that out there and make you aware of it. So who is Luminar AI for? Well, Luminar AI is actually perfect for anyone looking to make quick and really amazing looking edits um, for their, I don't know, social media, their website, or even their photography business. It's actually especially good for landscape photos, outdoor photos, and also things like portraits, beauty um, photography, and also wedding photography. That's actually because a lot of the AI tools are already set up for those kind of subjects. But there are some people who shouldn't use Luminar AI though, and it's worth talking about that. If you're someone who likes complete creative control, um, like you experience in Photoshop, I would say that Luminar AI is probably not for you. You see in Photoshop, if you can imagine it, you can create it. That's a pretty good saying. Don't you coin that, that's mine. <laughs> but if you can imagine it in Photoshop, you can create it where you have a little bit more boundaries or a little bit more of a boundary inside Luminar AI where you can only make changes and use your imagination inside the AI tools that you have been given. So once again, kind of like Lightroom. Skylum, the creators of Luminar AI have been kind enough to give me a 40% off link which I've put in the description of this very video. That means if you click on that link and buy Luminar AI from there, you will get 40% off and it's a one-time payment. You will not have to pay again. There will not be more monthly payments. You pay once, you get 40% off and this software is yours. But if you are someone which actually looks at Luminar AI and they think, well, do you know what? This is not really for me. Then the good news is Luminar are actually bringing out something called Luminar Neo. This is the next level. So if you're interested in Photoshop, Luminar Neo will be an alternative to that. It will give you layer support and all of the options that you want. Anything you can think of creating, Luminar Neo will make that possible. I've sat down with the guys at Skylum, the creators, and it looks amazing. If you're interested in that, there's a video showing now that you can check out which I've actually showed people the features inside Luminar Neo and it will be coming in the next few months. So go check that out if that sounds like your bag. If you've watched the video this far, guys, thanks a lot. It means a bunch to me. And I wanna thank you guys for the continued support on the channel. Hopefully this video was good and you got some kind of value from it. If you did, please hit that like button. It helps these videos perform better on the YouTubes and subscribe if you haven't already. Whatever you do for the rest of the day, guys, make sure it's a good one, and I'll see you in the next video.